I did it for the money. When I walked into the agency, I had three pounds left. I held them tight inside my pocket, pressed into the flesh of my hand. I had at home two Swiss roll cakes, one already bitten into, the other still untouched. Finally, said the agent, pulling me through the door of the Georgian mansion behind the Bank of England. She was already in her coat. Further down the gloomy corridor, I saw a few huddled figures. The agent nodded. You're going with them. It was almost 7 p.m. What about uh, business hours? <laughs> the agent laughed, but quickly and briefly, we didn't really have the time for it. Now listen, she said, and reeled off a whole list of arcane instructions for the test. Keep to what I told you. She said exactly what I told you. Whatever happens. The three pounds in my pocket agreed with her absolutely. The agent waved to a pale young man in the group. Address, she said. Uh, Peter, said the guy and smiled. I'll take care of it. The agent looked at us one last time, nodded briefly and left. There were ten of us then. I counted. While I was calculating the price of the tube ride in my head, a woman with asymmetric red hair suggested taking a taxi. Maybe it had been rash, buying those Swiss rolls. How would I get home when my three pounds were spent? We raced through the London evening. I was thrown against Peter and the red-haired woman who said she was an artist. Maybe she was poor too? When I climbed out, we were standing in front of a graveyard. Tombstones dating back to the time of the Great Plague huddled together in the city shadows. This was where we were going? Peter expertly led the way through the gravestones to a building rising recklessly above the centuries of dead. There was no name, no logo on the wall, no indication that anything was here except darkness. And this is how I came to work at the most successful bank in the universe.